I got a testimony for you. Got a, I can't remember if it was a word or a dream. And the uh, Lord told me that a bunch of Mormon people are going to get a touch in this building. So uh, I'm preaching on Monday. And I'm filling in for this other jail preacher. And man, it was, the anointing was so strong. I'm saying words like you can, boom, it's like a sword going across the place. And man, I thought, oh, man, the, the minister's going through hardcore deliverance. While I'm preaching, one guy got a touch. I was like, my goodness, they got all that. One guy opens up his heart and receives something. Unbelievable. So I'm a little bit, come Tuesday, I do counseling in here for Mike on Tuesdays. And I go through a two-hour one, and it goes okay. But sometimes when you go to church a lot, you get all this stuff in your head. That stuff's got to come out. That's why when Vivian gets the mic, I can tell when Vivian hasn't had an opportunity to preach for a while. This has got to come out. And you get all this stuff in your head, all this information, all this information, and nothing ever comes out. You never do anything. You're just hearing it, hearing it. Well, I'm living a better life. I'm living a better life. I, I don't do drugs. I don't complain anymore. My finances are up. My 401k is high. You know, you got to take some time working with these people. And so he gets a little touch and... And I'm like, okay, you know, let's, let's, let's keep going. Lord, I need a good one. And the guy sits down. I start looking at his evaluation sheet. And I said, oh, how long ago has it been since you've been a Mormon? He said, oh, no, I'm still a Mormon. I said, oh, Lord, this is almost humorous. So I put a little smile on my face and I said, okay. Well, I guess I got nothing for this guy. Lord, it's got to be all you. I got nothing. Zero. There's no way I can do anything for this guy. But he gives me a glimmer of hope. He said, hey, I happened to be here the time you were preaching, and I grabbed a hold of what you told me that I could speak back to the lust demons, and I quit the porn, and I'm, I'm, I'm four or five weeks in the victory. I said, oh, wait a minute. Hey, he's, he's reaching out. Not only is he Mormon, he's suffering with mental illness, two forms of it. And when you got mental illness, I hate to tell you, but other people can see it on your face. So when I first am looking at him, I'm like, oh my goodness, I got an LDS, mentally ill guy in my office. I don't know if you're in the counseling business, but this is the one that can throw you back a little bit. And I said, well, you know the difference between our Jesus? We believe that God had... God is, Jesus is God manifested in the flesh. God's only begotten son. There'd be two sons in your, in your, in your, in your religion. And he starts rattling this stuff off. I mean, he had years of studying this stuff. I said, oh man. And I don't really like taking people in the prayer rooms and laying people down. This is just my insecurity. Okay, would you like to come down? Yeah, I, I know it's a, it's a floaty raft that, uh, you know, you, that's for the swimming pool, but it makes it more comfortable here. Just go ahead and lay down. I'm going to turn the light out and pray. That's Mike's thing. It works for him. I've been on that mat myself. <laughs> that's, I came through here myself. No problem with it. But when I'm getting guys delivered, I'm talking to a guy in the middle of a, a jail cell. I, I'm in a place we, we don't do that. But Tuesday, that's straight where we went. <laughs> so you come on back here. You lay down right there. And he had told me, he says, I've had four manic breakdowns. And one of them was the night after I came here. And I came forward and a couple ladies anointed my head with oil. I sat down and said, hey, devil, I know you don't like this oil. So I started getting that oil, <laughs> putting it all over his head. Long story short, this guy gets a massive deliverance. Right. 20 minutes of just Mormon demons coming out. Pray for his body. Oh, it gets better. Pray for his body and everything feels good, but he's kind of walking with this little, this little hitch. And uh, he goes, hey, I got one more thing. 
my legs, since my back injury, it caused one of my legs to be shorter than the other. Oh, I said, okay, great. You sit right down, scoot all the way back. I don't even get to my prayer. I just grab his feet and the leg grows out. I don't know if it's releasing from the back, how that thing all works, but this thing's growing right in front of me. And he's walking around. Wow, I can't believe. Now he's moving fast. Can't believe the mercy of God. And that's what I'm going to talk about, the mercy of God. It's the mercy of God that got you saved. It's the mercy of God that sustains you. And it's the mercy of God that's going to pick you up when you fall on your face. That's, that's, that's the biggest problem in Christianity is people don't know how to get up. Because the devil will put a beat down on you. Everybody's got to take a beat down. I mean, you, you, you can't be a fighter until you've taken a whooping. You take a whooping, you learn how to fight back. You learn how to get into the fight off the gate. Until you, you don't you don't start till you're already staggering and your finances are already destitute and so your wife's already left you, your kids are already on drugs. You don't start fighting then. You learn to start fighting right when you see those signs. But it's the mercy of God that's gonna get you up. Well, who shall separate us? The Bible says in Romans 8, from the love of Christ shall tribulation, shall distresses or distresses or persecutions or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Who accounts you as sheep for the slaughter? The devil. Yet in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither life nor death nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The only thing that can separate you from the blessings is yourself. The devil is a masterful deceiver. Mental illness running amok. Scary. Some pods, the med cart will come. A nurse comes along this little cart. And they interrupt the service because they're in priority. And calling for meds. You get a line of six, seven, ten guys. Scary. Scary. In Romans 16, it says, And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. He's going to give you the victory. He's going to show you that he's the Almighty God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, that he's the Alpha and the Mega, the beginning and the end. He, if he took you from salvation, he's going to take you to the resurrection. I and mean, if we're alive, we're going to. We're going to meet him in the sky with those who have already died. And we're going on to glory. That's the promises of God. He's a good God. Religion is a powerful, powerful spirit. Do this. Talk about that. Change your mind. Just, just keep doing your best. You can't coach demons. You, you sanctify yourself. You, you train your mind according to the word of God. But you don't train demons. You can't do it. The demons have to be cast out. And the demons know you. They know you better than you because they're experts at humans. You're not an expert at human. You keep falling for tricks all the time with humans. You take offenses. You're discouraged. You wonder why someone else got favor. You wonder why someone else has something better than you have. You wonder why your husband or your wife got chubby. You're pissed off. You're so looking with the eyes. You want to eat. You want to touch. That devil knows humans. That's why he's called the master of deception. The father of lies. The only way he can deceive you is if you believe his lies. And he tries to question where God is. So many times we pray with people, well, I've been praying for years. Why hasn't God taken this away from me? Because God told you to cast out demons. Because the church wants to be people pleasers and they don't want to cast out demons. We want to make it look like all this pretty, oh, our church is great. Did you hear our songs? Did you hear that off the hook sermon? Did you see the way he moved the crowd? Did you see the way the people came to the altar and cried in the presence of God? Oh, they love that system. 
They don't like somebody that's been mething for four years, rolling around in his own puke. They don't like that. They don't like some woman that slept with 50 men, barking like some kind of animal with all the legion of demons she picked up. They don't like some woman howling and screeching that's been playing with the Ouija board and then on to tarot cards, and now she's got a uh, some kind of spiritual advisor on the internet. They don't like to see all that kind of stuff, but see, that's the moving of the Spirit. That's why most people... Don't under even, they don't even understand what it is to be a successful Christian. They don't even know what it means when you're, when you're pleasing God. They don't understand what it means to live in success as a Christian. Because the moving of the Spirit becomes common. It happened to me. It happened to me. I, I started seeing this and that happened and this miracle. It was unbelievable. I started thinking it was just common to see all these miracles. The Holy Spirit was moving. And I started taking it for granted. And the devil knows how to, how to bring what's in your heart right to the front. I began to go through some financial stuff. I said, well, Lord, I thought you told me to sell the house. I sold the house and I buy this house. I, I've been buying and selling houses. I bought over 60 homes. I've never ran into the trouble that I ran into the home that I live in now. Hell came to breakfast. It was everything that could have went wrong, went wrong. Everything that could have been wrong with the place was wrong with the place. Every time you opened up another wall, there was another $3,500 problem. It was unbelievable. And I began to grumble in my heart. I began to complain of what was happening. Taking my eyes that God's got me. No matter what it looks like on paper, no matter what it looks like in my bank account online, no matter what it looks like, God's always going to come through. He's always going to bless me. He's always going to raise me up. He's always going to take care of all my needs. It's just, will I always put him first? Yes. Yes. That's the trial. That's the tribulation. But see, if you know the mercy of God, you can endure things. Paul knew the mercy of God. So he becomes the most powerful preacher. He said, I bear the marks of Jesus Christ. When you saw this man, mangled face, busted eye, bad stitching job over here, welts on his back that, that would probably crack the skin at times when he was preaching and blood would begin to ooze out or a pus. He bore the marks of Christ. He was shipwrecked. He was imprisoned. He was beaten with rods. He was stoned. And we want this Christian utopia. Well, that's the way you saw it at church. Why can't it work like that for you? I need a 401k. I, I need to be able to retire at 60, 65. Uh, Social Security isn't going to do it. I, I need to have this money. I need to have a home paid for. I need to have all these things. Hey, what is this? Why don't I have this? And you begin to question. Now, I don't understand. In this world, two-thirds of this world's in starvation. One-third of the world is in near death or prone, super prone to diseases because of their malnutrition. If you have like a car and a roof over your head, you're like in the top 5% of the world. We get in this America delusion. Delusion. We get caught up in all kinds of stuff. Guys won't bow down. They, they're taking a knee for the flag. How dare them? What, what, what in the world are you talking about? These Christians fighting. This world is perishing. This world's perishing. This world, the United States is not in the book of Revelation. I'm not saying you shouldn't vote. I'm not saying you shouldn't care about your country. But you better care about people. You better care about putting God first. You better persevere. You better learn how to be an overcomer. You ain't going to overcome America with your complaining and your little Facebook post. You're going to overcome when you do something according to the word of God. It says, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? World lovers. Uh, it's hard. Oh, man. That's one of the toughest spirits to break. The world. I used to have the world at my fingertips. So I thought. Hey, I was taught that if you have sex with good looking women, you're the man. I was coached that way, ingrained into my mind. Playing college football, say, hey, there's 42,000 students. There's only 100 of us. Hey, we're the, I believe we were the men. Then I was hustling tickets. I was making, I could make $2,500 in two hours, $10,000 here on this weekend, $10,000 at this NASCAR, buying properties. I said, oh, I got this world. Oh, man, I'm going to have 50, 60 properties. I'm going to have millions. My friend does. My partner, he's got 50 homes. He's got three homes in Mexico on the beach, on Sandy Beach. 
He owns a hotel in, in, in uh, Mesa. Got 20 properties in Indiana. Bought them for pennies during the recession. Got more money coming in than he knows what to do with. That would have been the worst thing that ever could have happened to me. You being rich and having everything you need would have been the worst thing that ever happened to you. But yet you fight and you kick and you scratch when it's being taken away. See, you got to be sober. What, oh, I don't drink. I don't smoke. I'm not chewing tobacco. you got to be sober and in control that you would understand what the will of God is. You don't know the will of God because you're not sober-minded. You love the world. That's why you're infected with demons. Are you kidding me? They, they, when we first started making reality shows, everybody knew it was fake. I was like, come on, man, no one acts like that. Come on, the real housewives of Orange County. I mean, no, everyone knew you couldn't talk to someone like that, especially in Atlanta. I was like, man, those girls will put a beat down on somebody. Those girls can fight. I've seen girls fight. You could never backstab someone like that and get away with it. That's not real. But it's now train this generation. Reality shows that this is real. Backbiting, backstabbing, gossiping, hating, envying, lusting, craving things. Look at my car. Put some music to it. Look at my house. Look at all my things. I have achieved success. And you know what? People will treat you like that. Back up what you're feeling. They'll tell you. They'll whisper to you. That devil's so smart. He's got people in the palm of his hand. He'll send five to you. He'll send 10 to you. He'll send 20 to you. He knows what he's doing. Every time I come here and preach, something happens. Sure enough, I've been talking with this guy. I've been trying to get this guy saved in the gym. Tried to get his girlfriend saved. Had massive demons. I got him to manifest. They flipped out. They were crying, looking to him. Help me, please help me. I said, see, those are demons. That's how she finds them drugs in your house. It It wasn't by natural causes. The demons told her where the drugs were. That girl killed herself two years later, hung herself from a rafter. This guy crashes his ATV. His leg gets caught underneath the wheel and rips his leg off. It's hanging only by skin. Some guy comes and puts a tourniquet on him. They put his leg back together. He's got a mom that's a Christian, a brother that's a Christian. I'm praying for the leg. The leg is healed. The guy comes in, and I smoke pot for 10 years. You know, I was, when you smoke pot, you don't even, you get high for like 15 minutes. Then you just turn into the other you. Really not that high. That's just the other me. Matter of fact, he's a more pleasant me than the one that's not high because he's highly agitated. (laughs) And so the devil always likes to just see if I'm still interested. I always, he comes knocking and just say, hey, you still, you don't want to come back? This guy comes into the gym last night and he's vaping marijuana right in front of me. Blowing this, I said, hey, can, can you blow it out there? You know, stuff's all over. You can't even see it, but it's weed in the air. You can, and he's like, you're the only one. I get everyone high in here. All these chicks, all these guys, I'm always getting everyone high. You're the only one that I haven't got high. I'm like, devil, you are a liar. Yeah. Just blatant in your face sometimes, trying to call you back. Paul said, look, I, I finally figured this thing out. You really want a preacher to break, set that church on the right course. Paul says, look, I finally learned how to maintain. And I got to be content in any and every situation. Look, I've been eating off these Pharisees and Sadducee tables. I had gold cups. I had silver plates. Look, I had the favorite seats in the synagogue. And I had all the favor in the banquets. I had all the people calling me rabbi. I was the big shot. I learned how to be here, and I learned how to be brought low. I've learned. i got to be content. you got to learn how to be content. How are you ever going to be delivered when you don't know how to be content? It's hard. You can't just oh, be content. No, you got to train yourself. you got to endure. you got to go through some struggles. you got to go through some hardships. Your money is going to be pressed. Weird things will happen. My wife is the most calm lady that I have ever met. And it was by the grace of God saying, hey, the only way you can make it is if I give you this one. As a matter of fact, I lived on this street when I met her 25 years ago, Mulberry Street. And she'll flip out sometimes. People flip out on you. We got flaws. Some more than others. But we got flaws. 
no matter how loving your spouse is, no matter how perfect your husband is, it's going to be some bad days. You got to learn how to endure. You got to learn how to humble yourself. You got to learn how to take a step back. You got to learn how to give somebody grace. You got to be able to take an offense. So the guy, he came in for counseling. He says, well, man, I, I have to leave. Environments are always so toxic. Someone won't like me, and then they'll spread it to someone else, and then they'll turn the office against me. I said, why did you care about them in the first place? Who told you to care about how they felt about you? Who told you that? The world told you that. You're supposed to live and treat people right. You're supposed to love people. And if they receive it, great. You win a friend. If they don't, that's their problem, not your problem. Someone can't turn another person against you when the favor of God is on you. How's that going to work? Well, I've seen a guy. Everybody in the... In, now, there's no lying what you're in jail for. Uh, can you Google this guy's name? It's all up there. They all judge each other. And this guy was... The lowest of low sex offenders. You mess with your own kids, that sex offenders will beat you. Everybody wants to beat the sex offenders because when you go to prison, you have a little bit of respect. Somehow, some way, I don't know, by the grace of God, I've never been to prison, but that's the way the thing operates. But sex offenders will beat you if you did that to your own kids. This guy was like that. Gone. Creepy. Creepy. Went to church every day at one of these mega churches for 20 years. No one could help him. He was molested by his uncle for years, sodomized by his uncle, forced to do things to his uncle for years. Family wouldn't listen. Nobody would listen. He was so fearful. And this guy gets saved for real. He's going to church. The guy wasn't even saved. He was looking for help. Never even got saved. He gets saved in jail. He gets saved. He starts wanting all the benefits of God. You get someone saved, they want deliverance. You get someone that's been saved for 20 years, they're used to their demons. They're not so interested in demons. Well, how does this really work? I don't know if I really like that. Is this doctrinally sound? Dude, look at your life. Is that doctrinally sound? Are you kidding me? You've, you've made no disciples? Well, I had seven people say the sinner's prayer. Well, who told you that was making a disciple? You got to labor with somebody. You got to love somebody. You got to endure with somebody. You got to put up with all kinds of problems to make a disciple. <laughs> this guy gets delivered. Then a lot of people will get one or two deliverances, and then something good comes out. Something always comes out. Something good starts moving. If you're just going through deliverance <laughs> and nothing changes, you see, that devil's fooling you. There's something coming out when you're going through deliverance, and then something else or what is in you can now manifest, can operate for the glory of God. It's, it's something that can be seen. And so these guys will start sharing a word or an encouragement. They'll have joy. And then the Holy Spirit starts moving again, and they don't want to go through any more deliverance. Oh, I don't want someone to think I'm really sick. That pride, we talked about it four weeks ago if you were here, that pride will rise up and block your deliverances. Well, I've had enough. Why isn't the Lord doing this faster? Well, this guy wanted it all. Hey, there's no doubt I'm messed up. I can look at my life. I'll never get out of prison. I'm dying in prison. I want everything Jesus has. He kept going through deliverance. So when he would try to bring the word of God, people were standing back from him like he had Ebola. Dude, you're always coughing and hacking, dude. We don't want anything to do with you. So he had to go and get the new guys who were coming in. So next thing, he gets his new group of guys by loving them, by sharing the word of God. They judged him for who he was as a delivered man. So people would come and try to backstab him and say, hey, do you know this about him? Do you know what he was like? Do you know what he looked like when he was going through deliverance for two months? Do you understand he was on the floor growling? Do you understand he was uh, like, like a madman on the floor foaming at the mouth? And the people would say, look, I don't care. I'm judging him for who he is right now. See, you get caught up in this mix, then no one sees the, the Christ that's formed in you. They just see that manifestation of your old nature that keeps popping up. I want this from people. I want people to see me like this. I want people to treat me like this. You cannot dictate how people are going to treat you. you. You can control how you dictate how you control yourself, and that's it. That's what you're responsible for. But none of these things move me nor do I count my life dear to myself 
that I may finish the race with what? With joy. Paul's finishing the race with joy, all mangled up, lost his house, lost his place in the synagogue, lost his place in favor with the Pharisees. They're trying to kill him. No longer a Pharisee amongst Pharisees. His body's all beat up. Finishing the race with joy and the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Yeah, somebody that endured right there. All the Old Testament saints, oh man, are you kidding me? The endurance? Having one dream, Joseph, is willing to, come on. Okay, look, man, you know, this guy's wife's pretty fine. She's going to keep it on the down low. Come on, she can't let her husband know she's cheating with you. So, hey, you'll be two peas in the pod in this little sin. Let, our, things are already rough. Hey, let's not take a gamble at execution by turning her down. She wants to have a sexual relationship with you. Just do it. No one's going to know. He said, no, 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 I'm not doing that. You're going to put a rape charge on me? I, I'm not going down like that. I've already had the dream. The dream was crazy. Hear, O Israel, our Lord, our God is one. Before him there was none. After me there will be no more. And that you see a vision of your family bowing down to you? Oh, man, come on. This guy had a keen discernment what was God. Now this end-time deception is running amok. It's kundalini demons. Oh, this is the Holy Spirit. No, dude. Sorry, that's not the Holy Ghost. That's a demon. Whenever the Holy Ghost comes along, I just can't control my hand. Are you out of your mind? Running amok. People laying hands on people. There's ministers that, are, that got good healing anointings that will get you loaded with demons. If there's a prayer tunnel, you better run. You better test your skills and get up out of that church. I'd literally rather have you hit me at about 15 miles an hour with your car in that street before I'd go down a prayer tone. <laughs> You're going to get loaded. These people, that's some kind of spiritual trap under that thing. Got these people loading people up with demons right and left. Devils are smart. You got to have discernment. The discernment of Joseph to know this is a dream from God. That no matter what happens to me, my family's turned against me. They're trying to kill me. Now I'm a slave. Now I'm falsely accused. All these bad things are happening to me. And to persevere? Come on. We're called to something greater. And you'll never, you'll never see it if you don't persevere, if you don't fight. If you don't reject this world... This world is, it's pleasures, it's false sense of peace, it's false sense of comfort, it's sense of joy. You can feel things when you have money. When I was traveling the country, 20 some years old, got myself a new Benz, got me two properties now, three properties, got some investments, all my bills are paid for by my investments. Hey, I don't even have to work if I don't want to. I got my weed managed now. I realize I can't smoke weed before I go out and hustle people. I'll actually care about them. So I got to smoke weed after we hustle. I, I got everything perfect. I got it all handled. I felt good. I felt senses of good. When I had money and I would make this cash and had all the clothes that I wanted to buy, there was nothing I really couldn't buy. I knew I was going to become a millionaire. All my friends became millionaires. Unless the ones that had drug problems or gambling problems, minus those things, those things, they became millionaires. There was a sense of comfort. Sitting back in my house, watching TV, kicking back. But then God came knocking. <laughs> and he just spoke real soft. I'm not here. <laughs> Lord, why can't you be here? <laughs> this is good. This is the, I like this. I like this. And I would go about my day. I would go about my week. And a week later, he'd come knocking again. I'm not here. Oh, man, I got to change. I would literally walk around. You always see shooting stars. I mean, if you go out for a couple hours, you're pretty much guaranteed to see one at least 
every other time. I go out, Lord, okay, I'm ready to quit hustling and doing these tickets. Um, just show me a shooting star. This is going to be enough. <laughs> he shut down all shooting stars. <laughs> Nothing. I used to do this thing where, okay, sell tickets, but do it with integrity. Okay, Lord, show me the page number. Sure, the devil put it right there. Boom. You could sell tickets. He would, <laughs> literally, I would just open the button. There. Okay, I can keep going. But then a couple weeks later, those were a little bit more deceptive. I'm not there. you got to change. Fear would rise up. Oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? How, how am I going to, am I going to have to have a middle class house, three bedrooms? Oh God, what if it's a carport? No even garage. Some kind of American sedan with four doors. Oh. <laughs> What am I supposed to do? I don't have any skills. I've never had a job all my life. This is all I've been doing. How am I going to do it? What am I going to do? How is it going to work? All these questions. And God says, you've got to walk by faith. You've got to believe me. That's where I am. I'm not here. You're going to have to trust me if you're going to seek me. You're going to have to seek me. You're going to have to trust me in order to find me. Or you will just know a little bit about me. It was hard. It was hard shutting down a ticket office that made $10,000 a month. All we had to do was lie. It was easy. Yeah, uh, I'd sign up to be booster clubs at one school, and you could buy 50 tickets, and I'd be four boosters under four names so I could get all the tickets to this event, which was sold. It was easy. Just lie. The Lord's like, no, no. I'm not here. I told you about lying. All liars go to hell. The first demon that I got delivered from was the lying spirit. Brother Steve, this is 20 some years ago. He didn't know nothing about deliverance. And a demon manifested. I heard a word from God. He said, All liars go to hell. Something kicked up. I repented first. I said, Oh Lord, I'm sorry. I've been lying and lying and lying and lying. That's all I do all the time. This thing started growling. Steve comes out. You don't know Steve. This is what he moves like this. He was a little faster back then. <laughs> What's up with you, man? What's going on? I said, Steve, all liars go to hell. He's tripped out. I'm tripped out. He goes, man, I don't know. I don't know what to do for you, man, but let me pray. And all he does is, in the name of Jesus. That's it. Boom, it was gone. I looked at him. He looked at me. I said, hey, uh, let's just go to sleep and like talk about this tomorrow. Like, I didn't want nothing to do with that. That's weird. Nothing like that ever happened at my church. That demon came out. What was the keys to it? What's the process? The word. He echoed the word. All liars go to hell. You can be a Christian and burn in hell. I don't care what your five point Calvinism taught you. You keep lying. All liars go to hell. You got to repent. I repented. Lord, I'm sorry. I acknowledge my sin. The demon now, he's got no hold on me. That's why he's growling. He's got no hold. Oh, no. He's about to lose his home. The demon thinks your body is his home. In the name of Jesus, demons will flee. That's the simplicity of, of deliverance. God was teaching me faith. Then I'm selling tickets. It's the easiest thing in the world. We had Charles Barkley, Kevin Johnson, uh, Dan Marley. This thing was like taking candy from a baby. There was no internet. Hardly anybody like dealing over the phone. Everybody just came down buying seats. Come back from a Lakers game. Steve's staying at my house. And he starts talking about the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. He says, Rick, what are we doing if we're disciples? This is what the disciples did. They laid down their life. God has something for us, but this isn't what he has for us. There's no way. I looked around. And I said, wow, these dudes are addicted to drugs. They're addicted to sex. They're addicted to gambling. Uh, I'm trying to be, I'm married now. I'm trying to live a different life. I know God has touched my heart. I said, yeah, this is not it. Acknowledge the truth. I said, when we got home, I said, Steve, pray for me. I never want to sell tickets again. He put his hands on me, and that spirit that kept me bound to something left. Never sold tickets again. Amen. 
Deliverance is not complicated. People come in. The deliverance ministers are here. Silence in the crowd. <laughs> They've been praying for hours. They've been seeking God in sackcloth and ashes. Now they're here. We're, we're all the same in the same boat. Vivian was telling you about it. The only thing different is we got our touch. We got our revelation. We got our freedom. And now he says, what you have received, freely give. And it's simple if you'll obey the word of God. Oh, it's hard if your way and your love for the world is mixed in this process. We're going to be going through recycling. You're going to get delivered, feeling like a million bucks, because deep down you still haven't forsaken your life and you still haven't rejected the world. You still love it and want it and crave it. Then you get slowly reinfected and you pick up the demons and then you come back sick. You got a bad hip, a bad back. You got chronic headaches. Your family now is in disarray. You, you're now having all kinds of problems from every direction. You're back again. It's called the recycle system. Well, if you'll learn this message tonight about mercy, I'm going to share some verses. Mercy. Mercy is available. Though I was a born-again Christian, smoking pot, sexually immoral, uh, lying and hustling people, thinking I'm great, pride is very offensive to God. Pride comes before a fall. You are in trouble with pride. I was in trouble, but mercy came knocking. See, what you don't realize about the Holy Ghost is he's a small voice speaking to you. Oh, not the Holy Ghost with me. I, I hear him loud and clear. Well, maybe you, but everybody else is just this small voice echoing the truth, waiting for your response. That's biblical Christianity, your response to doing the right thing when no one sees. Oh, he'll set you up. He'll set you up. You, you'll have to pass this test. You a fornicator? You're going to have to pass some pretty big tests. I remember one time, I was flight was canceled. This girl kept looking at me. She was intriguing, very dress provocative. And I, I caught myself, I'm mad. And when you're mad, you start just obeying the flesh. And I start looking, and she's looking at me. And we're going to the hotel, and I'm thinking, man, I hope that I don't have to see her. Let's just kill this night, get on that flight, and go home. I'm a Christian. I haven't experienced deliverance, but I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to live faithful to, to my wife. I know hell comes to breakfast when you start cheating on your wife. You're in trouble. I know that. I'm not trying to get involved in that. And there's three people that go up to the second floor. Who's right next to me? Her. I'm putting my key into my door. She's putting, it's one o'clock at night. They tell us where the restaurant is, two blocks down, and we should go in groups. Imagine that instruction. <laughs> and I look over like an idiot, thinking, I hope she's not looking at me. Oh, no. I get in there. This devil starts shooting these thoughts in my head like you can't believe. First, it's, hey, just take her, just take her down to that sandwich shop. Hey, be, be a nice guy. Hey, that'll be a safe, you know, just little liaison for her so nothing bad happens. No, 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 no. No, that's, I'm not going nowhere. I'm not even hungry. I'm staying here. Then all of a sudden, I'm laying on the bed. I see the cable box. He goes, hey, you know, if you watch some porn tapes, that won't go on your bill. You never gave your credit card for this, this room. I mean, he's having full-on dialogue with me. He's, he's not playing. He will, he will rush you. Yeah, he likes to send thoughts. He likes to give emotions. You start giving that devil a little bit of, little bit of play, he'll, he'll talk with you. Some of you, you talk with him all day long. You think it's yourself. You're mentally ill. You talk half the time to devils, I promise you. All that negative stuff ain't God and it ain't you. You don't want to be negative. You don't want to be sick. You don't want to be depressed. You don't want to be jobless. That's the devil. Ephesians 2, 4 and 5 says, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, in which he loved us, that when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. That's mercy. Where were you? You were raised in a Christian fa family. That was mercy starting early. That was mercy rushed you when you were five. Praise God. But it was always by the mercy of God. He put a hunger in you when you were looking for him. He drew you to himself. 
He gave you a little taste. He gave you a word. But ultimately, the day of salvation came when you responded to the word of God. How are you going to get delivered when you don't respond to the word of God? Well, I just want to be delivered. I want everything to be right. No, this is a faith walk, responding to the word, stepping out in faith, moving forward, resisting the devil, cutting off that sin that so easily entangles. Romans 3, 23 and 24 for all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Free, free, free. Deliverance is free. It's a free gift. 2 Timothy 1.9 Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not no Mickey Mouse run-of-the-mill calling. You go through some religious things and light ten candles and get in a box and talk to some psycho. No, a holy calling. Doing something. Saving people. Casting out demons. Laying hands on sick people. Getting the sick people recovered. Now, you need to come to my church. My pastor's a great preacher. I really think you'll like him. You're the church. They already met you. They're going to get plugged in. Praise God. There's no, that's great. But you better bring the word of God. You better bring the love, love of God. Titus 3 and 5, he says, Not by works of righteousness, uh -oh, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he has saved us through the washing and the regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Spirit. There's a process of the regeneration. There's a process in the renewing. And some of you have been stunned, stumped, held at a certain point by the devil. Wondering why you're not advancing. He begins to question you. I begin to question myself. I got a call from God. I knew I was called to be a preacher. I could get up, man. I could, I could get up there and rip some scriptures. Everyone's like, oh, you're going to be a preacher. One day God confirmed it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be a preacher. This is going to go good. And I'm sitting and I'm selling Water and peanuts and hot dogs. And I said, Lord, what did I do? Did I mess that up? Did I blow it? Did I blow it? Did, I, did that, that calling pass me by? He's been questioning you. The devil. Bringing accusations against you. He's the accuser of the brethren. You missed it. You're not gifted enough. You're not talented enough. You don't have enough. He's a liar. There's a process. It's called the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. You haven't been letting God have his full way. He wants to regenerate you. He wants to renew you. This is your job. Renew your mind according to the word of God. You know the word of God. The devil can't fool you. You hear it and you do it. Jailhouse guys. The devil is so smart with them. He gives them these grandiose ministries. And I'm an encourager, so I don't want to tell them. Like, look, bro, the odds of you starting a church are like very slim. And it's going to take you at least 15 years. I don't say that. I say, hey, you know, God's going to bless you. You're right. He's going to, I work with the things that they're saying that are true. And then they get out because the devil gave them such grandiose dreams and they're not willing to work towards those dreams. They always go back to drugs. One called me the other day, hi. Not the most sanctified and holy guy. I started singing the song, Puff the Magic Dragon. So tired of his weed demons. I just started singing a kid's song to him. I said, Donald, why are you calling me when you're high? Come on, I know you. We've been, we've been together for years. You're just going to call me high. I'm not going to go down like that. I'm, not, I'm just not going to take that. i got to call that out. Sometimes you need to be called out on your stuff. We're just poor Christians trying to make it. It's so hard in this world. The devil's everywhere. He'll never let us get an inch. Do I got to go back to this? Nothing can separate you from the love of God. He's forming you to be uh, one that's living a constant victorious life by winning these battles, by overcoming, by enduring, by fighting. It's no cakewalk. Getting saved is a cakewalk. We're reading the scriptures. It's by mercy. It's by grace. But now you got to let him go deeper. According to the regeneration and the renewing process. 
1 Peter 1 and 3, he says, Blessed be the God and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again in a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Mercy, mercy, mercy got you saved. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace you have been saved through what? Through faith. This is not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not by works, least anyone should boast. Your faith. You had to have faith in the word of God. You weren't just saved you responded to the word of God and you got saved. You heard the word and then you had to respond to it in faith. You got to respond to the whole word to get the promises of God in faith. Oh, I believe it. I'm trying. It's by faith. It's by faith. So by mercy, you got saved. It's by mercy that you're going to be sustained. He's going to sustain you through this walk, through this ministry, through this calling, through these opportunities. And though the devil's going to come to the left and the right, he's going to sustain you. Even though I didn't know about deliverance, God was sustaining me. Stay in this place. I didn't even have the knowledge to speak back to the devil. I didn't even know it was the devil. I was thinking, man, I'm one negative person. Man, I still got some real devious schemes to be thinking all these things. I was claiming the devil's thoughts as my thoughts. He was still... So merciful to sustain me. Stay in that hotel room. Oh, he's been merciful to you. He has been merciful to you. I promise you look back and you will recount the mercies of God. For the Lord is merciful and gracious. He's slow to anger and he's abounding in mercy. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. You need, there's going to be times when you need him. There's times where he needs to come through. He needs to open that door, but he tells you to knock. I'll open that door in order to keep persevering and moving forward. There's going to be a time that you got to tap in to that mercy. It's not a one-time thing that you just receive it and you get saved. You continually walk in the mercy of God all the days of your life. Psalms 90 and 17, it says, And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands. For us, yes, establish the work of our hands. We're called to do something. And maybe he did. Maybe that was a vision from God with some of these, some of these inmates. But you got to endure. Joseph got a grandiose vision, an incredible off-the-hook vision that perplexed his father even. But you got to persevere. You got to you got to let God establish you for the work that's going to be done through your hands. You might have to start somewhere small. My, my calling, I wasn't missing my calling when I was selling hot dogs. God was teaching me how to love the unlovable people. He was teaching me to love people that everybody else had already given up on them, including their family and their children. They had nothing. They were destitute. They were homeless. They lived in bushes under bridges. When they got sick, then they would go to the, the missions. And to the upright, there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. Psalms 23 and 6, Surely gladness and mercy shall follow me all the days of, the life of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's the promises of God of sustaining you. You need more? 2 Peter 3 and 18, But grow in the peace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forevermore. Amen. We got to grow in it. He's merciful. I've seen him restore jobs. I've seen him restore marriages. I've seen him restore ministries. I've seen him restore health just Tuesday. You think that guy had his doctrine straight? Not close. But he was reaching out for mercy. And mercy came running. God's not a respecter of persons. You think he's not sending mercy to you, to help you, to sustain you, to bring you to the calling that he's placed in your heart? Oh, he's, he's got it for you. But you got to get it by faith. You got to take it, and then you got to move forward. I believe many times people get it, and they're afraid to move forward. Fear captivating them. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you there, brethren, 
by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Your body for the service of God. Oh, they're using me. They're taking advantage of me. They're speaking bad about me. They falsely accuse me. You don't know what I'm going through. I can't get ahead. I can't get nothing. Man, this thing starts with the things that come out of your mouth. You need to speak life. One time I was working on houses. You can be blessed and be ungrateful. I'm making good money. I'm working for this company. We're buying these foreclosure houses. I'm, it's hard work. I'm getting the listing, a full commission, but I got to help find the house and I got to run the rehab and then I got to list it to get the commission. And, I, and at first, I'm so grateful because we came out of recession. You couldn't sell any houses for three years in Arizona because they were falling percentage points every month. No one wanted to buy anything. Fear had captivated the, the valley. Every I think it was like, 20% of all homes went into foreclosure in Maricopa County. It was insane. And I'm blessed and things are starting to go well, but we're not buying as many houses. I'm putting in a lot of work. I'm starting to think, hey, wait, I'm only getting a commission. Hey, I could just get a commission by just meeting people that need to sell their house. And I got to do all this work. And I started complaining. And I go into this house and there was this bird flapping around all kind of funny. And I was like, man, I'm going to stomp on that bird's head and put it out of its misery. And I go and I look at the house, and I'm in there, and I was like, ah, oh, this thing needs a lot of work. This junker, some idiot's going to bid this up too high. We ain't even going to get this. And I'm ready to go stomp that bird, and I get a word from God. He says, speak life. So I go over to the bird, and I put my foot on it, and I said, be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I go over, and I sit on my car. God is my witness. This bird gets up and flies right by my face. <laughs> oh man, YouTubers want to eat me up. Mormons are getting born again and healed. Birds are flying. Oh, this is gonna, they're going to eat me up. I'm not kidding. Hey, maybe the bird was just acting sick. I, I don't know, but it flew off after I prayed that prayer. But I got the message. Speak life. Speak life. I was speak life is what God was saying. I was speaking death. I wasn't looking for God to sustain me. I started looking back. Hey, I had a whole bunch of money. Hey, I had hundreds of thousands of dollars that were lost. Hey, I'm just, I'm making good money now, but that's just chipping away to what was taken from me. Hey, this is going good, but this ain't good enough. Crumbling and complaining. Negativity coming out of my mouth. I was letting other people around me kind of set the tone. All the workers were kind of mad. They, they were guys who used to make 60, 70,000 a year. Now they're making 500 to 800 a week. They're grumbling. The guy I'm working for is not saved. He's not happy. He's grumbling. And rather than being the thermostat setting the whole temperature, I'm a thermometer dictating the temperature. And now they're, they're controlling me. We're called to be the salt. We're called to be the light in this dark world. But we got to rise up and to tap into something that's not in your human nature. It's the Holy Spirit power. And what I learned is you can come in here and you can have the Holy Ghost pour down in here and all these people get healed and all these people get delivered and I can wake up on Saturday and feel as flat as a pancake. It's just me. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, I got to mow the lawn. Well, that doesn't sound good. Let's watch some TV, a football. I'm tired of football. But I'll make myself like it. I mean, this is humanity. That's how we, that, look, what you had today doesn't sustain you for tomorrow. God says, seek me while I can be found. And, and he teaches this principle through the Jews who ate the manna that came from heaven that was perishable. 24 hours later, they had to trust him every day. They couldn't stockpile it. They couldn't put it in freezers. They couldn't package it. They couldn't freeze dry it. They had to trust God every day. We got to trust God every day. We got to seek God every day. You've got to learn how to pray. You've got to learn how to humble yourself. Well, I don't feel him. You got too churched out thinking you've got to feel God to do the right thing. Well, I'm just not sensing like praying. What made you feel that you had to sense like praying? You knew the Bible said pray. Pray unceasingly. You knew you had to get up and start praying. Look, I've learned how to pray in tongues. Vivian said she's going to give an opportunity for you to come to the altar and receive that gift. I don't even bother praying in the natural in the morning. 
My prayers are Mickey, my Lord, uh, help me today. <laughs> like crusty eyes. I'm a slow riser. Some people bounce up. They're just moving, especially if you're one of those light guys. They, you get up quick and go. Your prayers are probably off the hook, but mine are not. Well, Lord, help my kids. Help them not to grumble when they got to help me cut the grass. I, I don't even bother doing that. I just pray in tongues. Because when you pray in prayers or tongues, you pray prayers and requests unknown to the natural mind, but known to God as the spirit of a man makes intercession on his behalf. I'm going to go ahead and get some perfect prayers out there. And I have faith that stuff is happening in the supernatural. Things are ordaining my steps and the opportunities that I'm going to have before me that day. I'm going to be prepared. Then I go in. Faith starts stirring up. I start getting a little bit of optimism. I start realizing, yeah, there's going to be no altar call today. It's just me and my children and my wife. But you know what? There's something I can learn. There's something I could do. There's something I can, I can grow. I can bless somebody. I, I got a purpose today. It's not just on Tuesdays and Fridays and, and Wednesdays and Mondays at the jail. It's, it, it's today. So he's the sustaining God when we do our part. He always does his part. He always supplies all of our needs according to his glorious riches, which are in heaven. Now, the last part is it's mercy that raises us up from the fall. Man, I've, I've, I've fell right on my face a couple of times. Knowing deliverance, being born again, praying in tongues, being filled with the spirit fell right on my face. Outright just sin, been mad. I've given people some cussing. There's a little bit of sanctification. I've never given anyone any beatings, but I've given some I've given some cussings. I've pissed my wife off so bad. It's you're like, oh, this is like a, one of those weak getting over ones. This is gonna go. I've done it all, knowing all these things. But how do you get back up? Same way you got saved. Same way you got sustained by the mercy of God. Amen. Not by your works, not by your performance, not by you. It's Hebrews 4 and 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of God that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. The Lord is gracious in 2 Chronicles 30 and 9. The Lord is gracious and merciful and will not turn his face from you when you return to him. Church people well. I hate to break it to you. I mean, everybody's got a limit. Humans well. Your own family well. But God won't. He's not like humans. The minute you humble yourself, the minute that you, I was so happy, my pockets were fat, we ripped off a bunch of stoners going to the, the, the Rolling Stones concert. Rolling Stones. Well, that was, I knew you were going to be high going to that concert. <laughs> I didn't even bother buying and selling. I just went to the box office and bought a block of tickets. Headed out on the highway looking for somebody stoned, going to the Rolling Stones. Oh, it's sold out. Yep, sure is. Man. Loaded my pockets full of cash. It was like taking candy from a baby. Should have been a felony. Wasn't even a misdemeanor. <laughs> Happy. Feeling good. And God brings the word. All liars go to hell. All I had to do to get a Holy Ghost touch was repent. That's all you got to do. Sometimes you feel it. Praise God when you feel it. That teaches you how to do it. But you don't got to feel it to repent. You don't got to feel it to get down on your face and to acknowledge your wrong and to turn from your sin and seek his help because you know you need help when you're beat down. That's when you need God the most to have him raise you up. He says in Matthew 18, 21 and 22, it says, Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often... Show my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times. Jesus said, now I say to you up to not up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. And, you know, the Lord would never ask you to do something he doesn't do himself. Seven times, 70 times, I guarantee you, there's some people that you're going to run across that have pushed that number. That wasn't an actual number. That was as many times as you repent, I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you mercy. I'll give you a word. I give you a word. Sometimes that's a soft word, but it's going to be a word. You know it's true because you confirmed it in his word and he planted it in your heart. But now you got to just walk by faith. 
I want to be out of the miry pit fast. I want my finances fixed. I want the relationship fixed. I want my job reconciled. I want this oppression off me now. Hey, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to deliver you. My mercy's coming. I just want you to move forward. I want you to move forward. I don't want you to look back. I don't want you to grumble and complain. I want you to know that I'm with you. I'm going to bring, you, bring about that victory that you want. He's going to give you the desires of your heart. When you pray anything according to his word and you believe and don't doubt, it's going to happen according to God's word. The problem isn't with God's word. The problem is always with our alignment to God's word. 2 Peter 5 and 10, it says, But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, and strengthen, and settle you. You've been suffering now. I'm not going to make light of it. You got some mental illness, you got, you, got no, you got no job now, you really don't have any true friends that you can call on, your family is a little bit distant, they've lost their faith in you, they're questioning you, you've been questioning yourself, look, you suffered enough now, now it's time to go on to letting him perfect you, establish and strengthen and settle you. Everybody's got to go through some suffering. And I went through some suffering before I learned deliverance. I was stubborn. I had that church doctrine in my head. I said, there's no way I got a demon. An angel on the battlefield killed 10,000 men. If I had a demon, Richard Ramirez had a demon. Adolf Hitler had a demon. Stalin and Mauen had a demon. Uh, you know, all these crazy psychos. You know, the BTL killer. What was that guy? Boy, that guy had demons. You ever seen his testimony? Yeah, I killed him and choked him, snuffed her out. Whoa, those people got demons. How can I have demons smoke a little bit of weed backsliding? How, how can I have demons just looking at some porn? I mean, it's not like I got mistresses. It's not like I got chicks on the side. I got demons? Oh, yeah, when you're sinning in direct rebellion against God's word, and you've tasted the goodness of God, and you've tasted eternal life, and you've tasted of the Holy Spirit, and you've chose back to go back into sin, oh, by definition, you opened up the door and gave them, you, you gave them a little call when you logged on to XX. Hey, I'm open. Anybody looking to kick my face in? Just, some came. By the mercy of God, those monsters didn't come to make you a killer like those people or make you a, 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 a political tyrant. No, it was by the mercy of God some came in. But the ones that came in, they're not going to kill you. It was to bring you to that suffering need of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, God uses suffering. Paul said it. He said, hey, who he who's been sick in his body, hey, that guy puts away sin real quick. He's done sinning. He's been knocking on death's door. He's been laying in that hospital bed, having people wipe his rear end, feed him food. That guy's done with sinning. He uses it. Unfortunately, some of you are experiencing it right now. God brings about the miraculous healing. I've seen it in my own body. I've seen it dozens, if not hundreds of times now. Isaiah 55 and 7, it says, Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will have mercy on him and our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Wow. What mercy. When you get caught up in this judicial system, man, there's no mercy. These guys all lose this stuff, especially when you've ran out of big-time resources. Hey, if someone doesn't come through, Pastor, I'm about to lose my apartment. Hey, I can't get a hold of anybody. They're going to take, after 30 days of foreclosing on my apartment, they lock the doors, they hold the, the, the stuff for like 17 days, and then all my furniture is going to be gone. They put it out on the street, and everybody knows what's going on, and they come out from the other apartments, and they take my stuff. I'm going to have nothing. I got a flat screen. I got, a, I got an Xbox. I got a blender. I got, it's all going to be gone. Oh, man. It's hard sometimes. It is hard. Things are hard. I'm not making jokes out about nothing, man. I hear stories sometimes. Guy, the one guy that got a touch. Young guy, pretty handsome guy. He was crying his heart out. What brought him to the place? The suffering. His wife filed for divorce. At the end of the service, he told me and Steve, he said, the only thing 
My wife wanted me to do the only requirement she had for me. She could put up with all my problems. I had to get off drugs. Now I'm arrested for drugs. I got the divorce papers. That pain, that loss, it led him to Christ. He got saved. Matter of fact, when he came in, he goes, hey, you got any AA books? I said, no, I don't have any AA books. He goes, I heard you might have an AA book. I said, no, I've never even seen an AA book. <laughs> Mercy came looking for him. He came looking for an AA book. When me and Steve got done, he got something way different than an AA book. <laughs> Mercy. Mercy. God is merciful. You can't rebel against mercy. Are you crazy? Mercy is unmerited favor. You didn't earn it. You're never going to earn it. You're never going to be good enough. You're never going to be able to perform enough. It's the unmerited favor of God, the kindness of God. It's hard for our human minds to comprehend it because we all have a limit to a, the ability and mercy we can give to people. But God is infinite in his mercy. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he does what he does. I don't know how he created time and space, but he himself is not subjected to time and space. I don't know a lot of things, but I know mercy is real. And I know if you want mercy, you can receive mercy. And then when the mercy comes, then you will receive the help for your need. You got a need. Your finances are destitute. Your family's going crazy. You're backsliding back and forth to drugs. You've gotten a little bit of deliverance, yet you go back to drugs. You don't understand that there's more mercy. There's more grace. There's more help. Enough for you to live in victory. I promise you that. But you got to receive it. The devil's so smart. He loves to condemn people that get a little touch and a little bit of deliverance. And then you go back. Look, it took years to pick up all the demons people pick up. You don't pick them up overnight. When I started going through deliverance, it wasn't just the weed that I had backslid and picked up that I was being delivered from and the porn that I had picked up that I was being delivered from. I found that there was a laundry list of stuff that was still in me from the time I was born. I started sinning. I can remember by five years old, I stole my first two Hot Wheels at five. I remember the day, man, I had a conscience that said, don't you do that. Did it anyway. I had all kinds of spirits. I was not mad at you because you got loaded with spirits. He's a merciful God. He loves you. He hates the devil. The devil's the one sent the, sent the spirits to you. The devil's the one that set that hardship, that financial loss, that pain in your body, that problem with your children, that distance between you and the loved ones. And he hates the devil. He loves to give his children the victory. He loves to triumph over that devil. He loves when his children learn the word of God and learn how to operate in the word of God and put a whooping on the devil for what he's done to you and your family. And you take back that ground and God keeps giving you more. He's an abundant giver. He'll give you more than you ever wanted. You start with wanting some deliverance, you find out, man, he'll, he'll burst something in you to want something. You'll start wanting something for somebody else. You'll start loving people that aren't even lovable. He's a good God, but we can't really go too far without mercy. Self-righteous people, man, they got a plateau. I asked that Mormon guy, I said, after he got healed, I said, hey, are there any healing in the Mormon churches? He said, yeah, they testify all the time, but, you know, it's normally after someone finishes their chemo and they stand up and said, yeah, they got delivered from cancer. And, Hallelujah. <laughs> someone broke their leg. Six weeks later, the cast comes off and the, his legs healed. Hallelujah. He did six weeks of wearing the cast and crutches. <laughs> but, you know, a lot of Christians do that same kind of, that seems idiotic to someone that knows the divine healing that someone saw someone divinely healed. Someone that really reads the Bible with faith, that seems foolishness. But so many people have that poor sense of understanding when it comes to deliverance. Oh, I was deliverance. I was delivered. I read the word of God. I was in it. I was so hungry. I was in it for like a week. I didn't even sin. Well, of course, your faith was way high. You were, you were meditating on the word of God. The devil didn't have any fuel. You weren't sinning. The devil's fuel is sin. That's as idiotic as someone saying, oh yeah, I was delivered from a, a broke leg and I went to six weeks of rehab. No, you didn't get delivered from reading your Bible. You didn't get delivered because you went to Bible camp for two weeks and you did all these activities with Christians. The devils just laid low. Sometimes they lay low for seasons, even decades. Just like me when they sprung up on me after not smoking weed for seven years. 
they're still there. Oh, I'm delivered, preacher. That's what all these inmates tell me. I'm delivered. I'm ready to go. I'll see you Friday. Still waiting for them dudes to show up. They found out they weren't delivered. How did they find out they weren't delivered? Because they weren't able to do what they knew was right. That's your gauge to know if you're delivered. Can you do what is right? It's not your feeling better. I told you I felt real good as a sinner. I really felt good. I was healthy. I would have got sick. I would have got arthritis. I would have got cancer. I would have got a heart attack. But for the meantime, at the beginning time, I felt good. You grumbling and complaining, backbiting people, doubting God's word, cursing God even, some Christians. Oh, I'm delivered. I don't got no demons. I just need to sanctify my flesh. No. Them devils are taking too much ground for you just to have to sanctify your flesh. No, 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 not with the life you've been living, not with the pain you've been suffering, not with the things that have been coming out of your mouth, not with all that turmoil going around you. No, that's deliverance. The only thing that's going to bring about the fruits that you desire is deliverance. So we're going to get some deliverance tonight. If you don't do self-deliverance, that's our one goal. Deliver, deliverance is like a minister. He kind of like, you got the perfect battery. Like you buy a brand new car. Those batteries are perfect even if you live, leave your lights on. They just ran the battery down. You get a good battery, you jump it. Then your alternator charges that thing up, self-charging. That's our goal. We just want to give you a little jump. And then you just learn by faith. All we did here was stood on the Word of God. All we did was re receive the Word of God and believed it. And then we did in action what the Bible told us to do. And you just do the same and the devil will come out. He'll, he'll resist you for a while. Because he knows your patience level. He knows what kind of natural endurance you have. So you're going to have to tap into something other than yourself, some supernatural Holy Ghost power, so that you can endure and keep resisting and keep drawing closer to God. And I promise them devils will start coming out. Every one of them will come out. There's no equal playing field with God. It says the devil was cast out of heaven like a bolt of lightning with God's pinky. Bink, you're gone, devil. No, you took a third of angels. No, there is no battle here. You're gone. Your destination is the lake of fire. He will throw that devil out so fast. But the reason he does it in stages is to teach you something. To teach you something. You better honor God and honor God when you get delivered because when the devils come out of a man they go about the dry places looking for rest they can't find any rest why they're assigned to you they're not assigned to any anybody if a devil got kicked out of somebody he could just go right down the block and get right into somebody it would take him two seconds somebody's got an open door in that apartment complex I promise you we can see into there oh boy that'd be scary but he's assigned to you, so he goes to the dry places. He can't find any rest. He comes back, and he, uh-oh, he finds it swept clean in order, but God's not there. We got to do our part. We got to be praisers of God. We got to be worshipers of God. I had to learn. My worship is coming in here. Counseling, I, I'm, I'm not a, Mike been a counselor for years. He'll come in here. He'll wear some funny clothes, gym shorts. <laughs> He'll walk around with bare feet. You know, he'll have a slurpee. This is just, this is just for me, I got to like set my mind. Okay, I'm going to help somebody. I got to coach myself. We're going to help somebody. God's going to do a miracle. Somebody's going to be grateful. Mike can't do two people at one time. I'm helping somebody. We're getting some. I, I got to coach myself. I got to get in here. I got to pray. I got to pray for patience. Are you kidding me? Your story sometimes, I don't need an hour's worth of that story. You could have just told me your problems. We could have jumped right in this. But to make you feel good and comfortable, I just sit there and listen to it. I got to tap into something. I got to lay my life down. Yeah, it's fun to go and preach when people love it. Man, you go and preach and someone don't love the word. You talk, you'll feel, you'll walk out of them jail sometimes going, ooh, oh, that's bad. You just heard all that. You just heard all that and you didn't jump. You didn't stand to your feet. Oh, wow. That's scary to see that stuff. Ministry is not cookie and cream. It's cookie and cream when you watch that preacher on YouTube and he's got a 50-piece band playing behind him. He's got an organ player. He's got dance moves. He's got all kinds of jokes. Uh, he's got little saying, you know, that's all fun and gay. You've got a check coming in every month. You get 10 grand a month. Those are fun gigs, but not you, you ain't getting one of those. Real Holy Ghost ministries are work. 
And the prize, you have to realize, is not you having a better life, having more things, more cars, bigger house. Your prize is to see God move. And mercy to show up. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And to see him heal somebody's hip or back that don't even know God. Not even been saved. Just had an encounter with the true living God. That's the prize. One disciple. Are you kidding me? You don't want one disciple's worth. You don't know what one's disciple's worth. I don't know what it's truly worth in eternity. You labor with someone two, three years. And they finally come around to understanding. You finally set them in enough scriptures and understanding that they, they're able to maintain and reproduce themselves. Are you kidding me? Hey, when the Bible says that some will hear the word of God and they'll fall on good ground and it'll produce 30, 60, and 100 fold. Are you kidding me? You make 30 disciples? Yeah. Boy, you're big time. Yeah, I used to think it was saying that sinner's prayer. Man, them people get knocked off like you can't believe sinner prayer prayer. So I'm talking about a disciple that could re reproduce himself. You go do labor something like that in three years and you see the goal and you don't rejoice and you don't praise God. Your children love God and know him and are worshipers and they shun evil. You don't praise God when they go through a trial and it hurts them for a while, only to allow them to be drawn to God through that pain. You don't see your own life, that God had this great calling for you. The world didn't have a great calling for most of us. We weren't ever going to be one of these senators or one of these phony politicians, one of these big time CEOs making an exorbitant amount of money. This Roger Goodell, he said he wants $49.5 million a year. We were never going to be like that. But God had a calling on your life. And that calling was so greater than any calling in the world. And it was to what you had received from God, you were to give away. But you can't give away what you haven't received. That's called a religious person. That's religious teaching. You can't teach the details of that. You can't disciple somebody in something you don't know. You've been through hell, so you can teach people how to go through hell. And come out on top. You've been through pain and loss so you can teach someone either how to be grateful for what they have or to get out of the situation because God has risen you out of it. God's always taken what the devil has meant for harm and turned it around and using it for his glory. you got to see that right now. If you see that right now, you'll fight for this deliverance. You, 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 I, nothing makes me more disheartened than someone said, guy came up one time, well, you're the man of God. See if there's anything in here. <laughs> I wanted to say, dude, you said you're saved. How about all that stuff I don't see? You need deliverance. Come on, man. You can't come with an attitude like that. You're not supposed to trust in men. You're supposed to trust in God. Faith comes by hearing. You hear someone bringing the word of God and their testimony. Well, that's an overcoming testimony. And that's the blood of the lamb that's being proclaimed. We can grab a hold of that. It's real. Some of you got to go. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray a blessing. Your self-deliverance starts. You've been going through deliverance. Look, sometimes the heat comes. The heat comes to refine you like fire. Through the fire. It's not there to hurt you. There's something there. There's deeper levels that God wants you to trust Him. You got to, man, there's some situations I've heard of. Them. I said, oh, wow. Only God. Sometimes he puts you in those positions. Only God can do. Only God can get you out. Then you come out on top with real faith, genuine faith, not generic faith, not faith just according to what you read, but faith that you've walked through and received and endured. So I'm going to pray that prayer. And then everybody that can stay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna command some spirits to come out. And then Vivian's going to be up here. We're all going to pray you through to the Holy Ghost so you can get that wonderful gift of tongues if you don't have it and that's what you want. But I want to do deliverance first. My son, when he, he was first going through deliverance, my one son, and I just prayed for him, boop, tongues just flowing right out of him. My other son, no, he was a little older. Been sinning a little too much. And that thing wasn't easy. We had to go through some more deliverance couldn't, tongues wouldn't come out. More deliverance wouldn't come out. By about the fifth or sixth 
you know, round, hour into it, whatever it was, that stuff started flowing out. Them devils will block those tongues. <laughs> they take that stuff serious. Most Christians don't. They think it's a nice little arsenal. Hey, I'm a Christian. Oh, man, if you're a singer and you can do the tongues, they think you're the best worshiper around. <laughs> they think that is off the hook. That's what Christians look at it like, like it's some kind of attribute. Hey, God's in this person. No, that's your prayer language. Prayer is the key to your success in your relationship. That's, a, that's, a, that's not something to take for granted. When God said it's available for everybody, he'll give it to you. And he says, look, though you're evil, which one of you, if your son asked him for uh, uh, bread, would give him a stone? Which one of you, if your son asked him for a fish, would you would give him a snake? No, which, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? He's going to give you the real deal. I'm going to give you something, something foreign. Praying in the tongues is demonic. It went away with the last disciple. Once the, that, that, that's that dude that, that died. He taught that doctrine. That guy said the end of the world. Harold Camping taught that one. No, tongues is here today for the believer. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change what he's done for one. He'll do for all. If that was a key attribute of the Bible in all the day from the day of Pentecost, from the day that, that uh, Peter and John went down to the Samaritans, and they received their tongues, whether it was when Peter went to Cornelius and the Holy Spirit fell down on the Gentiles and they received the gift of tongues, come on. That's for us. That's for us. Well, let me pray for the, everyone that has to go, and then we're going to ask you to come to the front, and the ministry team's going to come. If you came here from out of state, this is uh, Mike's encouragement. Get down to this altar. Do not wait. Do not neglect. You get here. This is important. You get everything you can while you came into town. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray for all my friends, Lord, on the Internet. I pray for all my friends that came out to hear your word. And we want to thank you, Lord. We want to thank you and praise your holy name for the mercy. It is by the mercy of God I stand here today sharing about mercy. Oh, could have only been accomplished through your mercy. And I praise your holy name. I praise you that there's mercy available to every one of us in our time of need. I pray that a hunger, Lord, that my brothers and sisters would reach out and grab it. Thank you, Lord, that it's here that we can grab it and we can move forward and walk in victory because that's your desire, Lord. We praise your holy name. And Lord, I pray that through mercy, the authority, according to Luke 10, 19, to tread over that devil like a snake, a snake and a scorpion, that nothing by no means shall harm us is available to all of us, that we can reach out and grab that mercy, that self-deliverance is available, that whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever we loose on this earth will be loosed in heaven, and every devil must flee at the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that all my brothers are empowered by the Holy Spirit to finish their deliverance through self-deliverance. Thank you, Lord God. I pray, Lord. We're praying for the revival, Lord, but the revival starts with the 60 people that came tonight, with those that are, sh that are listening on the internet. Revival starts with us, Lord, that we can go out and help somebody, that we can go out and bless somebody. But Lord, tonight, Lord, we receive our deliverance. We receive our gift of tongues. We receive the things that you desire to give us to equip us for the victory. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you got to go, praise God. I appreciate you coming out. And the ministry team is going to come forward. And we are going to have an altar time. If you know that you need a touch from God, you need a miracle, you need mercy, you need a divine healing in your body. You know some spirits got to come out so that you can pray in tongues. You prayed in tongues, but your tongues aren't flowing like they used to flow. You pray in tongues, but you don't want to pray in tongues. That's what this altar calls for. And we're going to get those spirits out of the way so we can walk in this victory. All right. That's you. Come on up to the front. The ministry team's going to join me. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Oops. Thanks, everybody, for all the gifts. We got the healing house now. You're supporting those people. That's food. That's light. 
that's a mortgage payment over there. We don't have a mortgage on this place, but that one does. That's sustained by people who give. We give it right back to either the radio program or to that place. Thank you so much. When we get started, <coughs> I'm not, don't leave if you haven't got the tongue so the tongues are hindered. We're definitely doing that. So if the Depending on how things go, I, I might have to be reminded by one of the staff, but we are doing that tonight. Sister Vivian, I think she said she was going to stand on the left or the right, but she's coming. Brother Steve's coming. Brother Ru Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. As we're giving some time for some of the ministry team to get their stuff in order and heading up here, I want you just to, just in your mind, just begin to, just just in your own way, just with your eyes shut, you just, you have to relax. I don't know what it is about relaxing, but when you're tensed up, it's hard to get a deliverance. So just know that you're in the presence of God. He's the one that drew you here, and it's going to be Him that delivers you from evil. If you're watching this online, just relax. This is the time to kill that phone if you're online. You know, the enemy's going to try to distract you somehow, some way. Sometimes you got to shut that door. Just relax. Begin to let God just begin to put a hunger in your heart. There's some people we're going to have to release from our soul. You're carrying around your children. You're carrying around your burdens and your pains. The spirits are already moving. Those yawns coming out, those are spirits. Just in your heart now, there's some people you got to turn over to the Lord. Some of you have not even forgiven yourself fully. You're still waiting for your performance to rise up to be at the level that you expect to receive the miracle. That's a lie from the devil. You've blown a lot of things just like me. You messed up a lot of things, a lot of opportunities. Just release yourself now. Just by faith, I forgive myself. By faith, I forgive my children. They turned on me. They hurt me bad, Lord. People hurt me. They stabbed me in the back. They did evil to me. But Lord, while I was dead in my sins and trespasses, you forgave me. Lord, who am I not to give away what you have freely given to me? You have commanded me to give it away. You said even my own forgiveness would be in jeopardy that if I would not forgive, that you would take it from me. Lord, I would never give anything in exchange for my forgiveness. Come out, devil. Just forgive them right now. By faith, I release these people from my soul. I release my husband who beat me that stole the money. They messed my kids up. I, I, I forgive these people. Just turn them over right now. I guarantee you this is the number one barrier, unforgiveness towards your deliverance. I forgive those people. Come out, devil. I forgive those people that got me into witchcraft. Come out. Come out, you witchcraft spirit. Come out there in the name of Jesus. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. Lord, I receive your mercy, Lord. I'm forgiven. That's the way it is. I receive that mercy, Lord. I receive that mercy for deliverance, oh Lord. I receive the mercy, Lord God. I can only be delivered by mercy. I receive that mercy. Come out, devil. Come out. Mercy is here. Mercy is here. You come out, devil, in the name of Jesus. Receive the mercy. You'll be delivered. Come out, devil. Come out of me in the name of Jesus. Come out of me in the name of Jesus. Come out. Mercy is here. Come out, devil. Mercy is here. Take a big breath. There it is. It's coming out. Mercy is here. Come out of the woman. Come out of the woman right now. Mercy is here. Come out. Come out. Mercy is here. Take a big breath. Mercy is here. She's forgiven. Come out. Mercy is here. Come out. By the mercy of God, I'm delivered. Release her right now in Jesus' name. Release her right now. Take a big breath right from here in your belly. Take a big breath. My friend, just relax. Just relax. There it is. Come out, devil. Let her go. All the pain, witchcraft, sorcery, and divination, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Hurts and wounds from past lovers, I bind you in the name of Jesus. False prayers, I break you in the name of Jesus. Oaths to evil, I break you in Jesus' name. Keep fighting. Come out, devil. Come out. I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus from this man right now. Rebellion and anger, come out right now. Abuse that came in through verbal assaults against him when he was little. Come out in the name of Jesus. 
that fighting between him and his dad. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. I bind your power in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Keep coming out. Come out faster. Come out faster in the name of Jesus. Come out. This man came all the way across the country. Come out. Steve, how about right here? How about right there, those two? Come out. All those spirits of anger and frustration. Frustration at his relationships. Come out. Frustration and anger. Come out. There they are. Come out. Frustration and anger. Come out. Mercy's here, devil. Come out. Mercy is here. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go. Mercy is here. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go. Go. Just forgive yourself. Come out now. He's forgiven, devil. You have no holes in a man that's turned his heart over to the Lord. Come out. Come out. Keep going. Keep blasting those out. Come out. All the mercy. Thank you, Lord, for the mercy that comes in. Thank you for the mercy, Lord. The mercy sets us free, Lord. We thank you for the mercy, Lord. Every bit of guilt, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of performance, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of offense and unforgiveness, I bind you in the name of Jesus. These women stand at the altar of God, forgiven, forgiving other people. And you have no hold in them right now in the name of Jesus. I break every word curse ever spoken over them in the name of Jesus. I break every bit of anger in the name of Jesus, every bit of resentment, every bit of betrayal that came from church people. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. We have been given another chance. We have been given this opportunity, and I command you by the power and the authority of the name Jesus to come out. What's your boy? Did you have a boyfriend that hurt you? What's his name? What's his name? Alan? Have you ever fully just turned him over to God without based off feelings or based off him doing the right thing? Just forgave him completely for all that wrong and pain and abuse and loss of finances and time. Are you willing to do that right now so you can get healed? Otherwise, you're going to carry all those emotions constantly. You're going to carry all that pain constantly. You willing to do that? Okay, just pray this with me. Heavenly Father, I forgive your I receive your mercy. You forgive me by mercy, Lord unmerited favor not by my works I received that mercy Lord Jesus and my boyfriend hurt me Lord he caused me a lot of pain but I want to by faith forgive him Lord the way you forgave me I forgive him he doesn't owe me anything he doesn't need to apologize I hate what he did but I release him now I release him to you, Lord, for blessings. I pray for his soul. Forgive me of the anger and the hatred and the unforgiveness. Forgive me, O oh Lord, for my sins. I want to be free, Lord. I want to walk in freedom. Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy. Now I command those soul wounds to release her now in Jesus' name. Soul wounds from this boyfriend. You come out in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out of there. Take a big breath. Come out of there. Go. Soul wounds, you come out of there in Jesus' name. Soul wounds and anger and hatred, you loose her in the name of Jesus. You've been blocking her for years from moving on. You've been blocking her from the intimacy from God. You must come out in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. I renounce you in the name of Jesus. I take authority over you. You heard that prayer. Come out of there. I know you're hiding right there. Come out. All that pain. Come out. All the pain that causes anxiety. All the remembrance. Go. 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 Go, go in the name of Jesus. Release her. Go. There it is. Let your tears go. He's going to heal you this way. Go. There it is. That's the Holy Spirit. He's healing you now. He's healing you now. Let those tears go. That's Jesus. You're weeping to Jesus. He's healing you now. Come out, devil. Go. Go. Go in the name of Jesus. Come out of this man. Go. Come out of that soul. Pain of evil. Come out. Cancer. Come out. Cancer and death. Come out. Cancer and death. Come out. Cancer and death. Come out. Take a big breath. Go. Go. Cancer and death. Hatred and anger. Go. Go. Lust and pervert. Go. Lust and pervert. Go. Anger and lust. We renounce you. Also, just, just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I receive your mercy for the forgiveness of the sexual immorality and not trusting you. I trust you now, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Your mercy delivers me tonight. Now you heard that, devil. Come out. Go. 
Go, go, go. There you go. Let it out. There it is. Go. Pervert spirits. Pervert. Go. Go. Keep breathing and I'll come out. Go. Go. Keep going. They're coming out. Go. 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 Anger and rage. Self-hatred. Come out. Self-hatred. Come out. Go. Keep letting them go. Keep breathing. They're coming out. Go. 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 Witchcraft, sorcery, and divination. Come out. Word curses. Go. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Go. Devil, you come out. You're lying. You're lying to this man. Come out. You're coming out. You've lied to him totally. He's not coming out. Witchcraft, sorcery, and divination. Come out. The occult, hatred, and anger, and meth. Come out of the mighty name of Jesus. You're coming out of there right now. Go. Death, come out. Death, come out. Death, come out. Go. 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 Take a few big breaths. Go. Meth. Is it meth? What have you been doing? What drugs? Meth and what? Been clean for oh, okay, while, it's still I've, coming out. Been, go, did, take a few big breaths. Meth, come out. Meth and stealing. Meth, stealing, and lying. Go. Meth, stealing, and lying. Go. 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 Go in Jesus' name. Go. 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 Take a few breaths. Keep it going. Go, devil. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Mercy comes today. Mercy comes, devil. Go. Mercy comes today, devil. Go. What do you need deliverance from, sister? You have a lump? Did you used to be hard on yourself? Critical and nitpicker of your own performance? Okay, you're willing to forgive yourself so you can get rid of that lump? I want you to pray this prayer by faith. Dear Jesus, I thank you for your mercy. I receive your mercy. I'm saved by grace. You save me. By grace, you heal me. You heal me of this lump, Lord. I receive it. And Lord, I repent of being hard on myself, for being critical of myself. I was saved by grace through faith. This wasn't of myself. It was a gift. I forgive myself. I forgive those people that hurt me. I forgive those people that wronged me. I forgive those church people that turned on me. Thank you, Jesus. You heard that prayer now. Death and cancer, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Death and cancer, I command you to come out. Nitpicker and critical spirit, come out in the mighty name of Jesus. Come out now. Come out. Word curses that she spoke over herself, come out. Word curses she spoke over herself, come out. Word curses from family members and lovers and friends, come out. Go in Jesus' name. Take a big breath now. It's going to come right out of you. Bigger. Go, devil. Go. Go. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go in Jesus' There it is. Go in Jesus' name. There it is. Don't stop those tears. He's healing you. Go. 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 Go, nitpicker, critical spirit. Come out. Nitpicker and critical spirit. Come out right now. Come out. You're the one that sent the lump. You're the one sent that sent that, that lump. Come out now in the name of Jesus. I want you to take a big cough right from there. Two or three big coughs. By faith, bigger than that. Come out, devil. You heard her. She's moving in space. Come out. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming out, devil. Keep coming out, devil. Keep coming out. I bind your power. I loose you now. Come out. Come out of there. Nitpicker and critical spirit. Jealousy. Come out now. Jealous of other Christians. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Envious. You come out of there. Go. Faster. Lump, you come out of there. Come out, malignant and cancerous tumors. You're all bound. Loose in Jesus' name. Go. Go. Fight hard now, sister. Fight hard. Okay. Every five. Keep going. Don't you leave. You're, they're coming out of you now. They're, that's them. Come out. That's them. Come out faster, devil. You try to get her to turn away and go home. You come out of there. You're coming out of there. She's not going until that lump is gone. Come out, lump. Come out, nitpicker. Come out. Jealousy, envy, and strife. Gossip. Come out of there right now. We bind every spirit that caused that lump. Self-hatred and critical spirit. Come out in Jesus' name. Move out of that body. I bind that whole legion. I know you're in there. You come out. Lump, you come out. Go. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go in Jesus' holy name. Come out of there. Come out of there. Come out of this man. Go. Go. 
Go. Keep taking a few big breaths. Come out. It's going to come out of you. It's going to come out of your blood system. I bind you out of the out of the endocrine system, devil. I bind you out of the lymphatic system. I command you to come out of the lymphatic system. Come out right now. Come out of the lymphatic system. Come out of the hormone system. Come out now of the immune system. You come out. Come out of the woman of God now. Come out. Come out. That critical spirit. Come out. Did you ever hate anyone when you were a kid or a teenager or a young adult? Oh, yeah. Who? I had a man molested me. Oh, what's his name? Okay, Bob's going to go to hell if he don't get mercy, okay? He already died. Okay, I want you to forgive Bob even though he's gone. You have? Okay, let's pray it again. Dear Jesus, you have forgiven me freely. And in faith, Lord, I do forgive Bob for that terrible evil he did to me. I forgive all those people that turned against me. They were very harsh and critical to me. They caused me pain and sorrow and tears, Lord. But mercy was given to me, and I turn and give it to them. And I ask for, and I forgive those people who didn't even ask for it. I forgive them and bless them, Lord. I pray for them in Jesus' name. Okay, now that spirit, his name was Bob. Bob, you foul spirit that, that came. I know that was a demon that was in Bob that touched this woman. How dare you touch this woman, devil? How dare you do that to a woman? How dare you touch her innocence, you foul devil? I bind the spirit of Bob in the mighty name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of attack and assaults in the name of Jesus. I bind all those spirits harboring in her body, lodging in her body, held there because of the unforgiveness. Well, she has repented long ago and forgiven those people. And you heard that prayer, devil. Now I command you in the count of three, devil, Lord, this lady needs mercy. Oh, thank you for mercy, Jesus. It's only by mercy tonight. Devil, when I count to three, you're coming out. One, two, three. Come out, devil. Take a big breath. Go. That's it, devil. You heard that prayer. Come out of there. Come out of there. She's not going to have cancer. She's not going to have to have surgery on this lump, devil. You and your foul minions have put that lump there, and I command you to come out right now. I command you to come out right now by the power and the authority of Jesus the Christ. Take a few big breaths. Come on, fight them. You're going to get healed. You don't need to go to surgery for that. God will heal that in a minute. Take a few big breaths. He loves you. Thank you for mercy, Lord. Mercy, come in. Mercy, come in, Lord. Thank you. It's only done by mercy tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I know she's not a hardcore sinner. She's not a hardcore sinner, but, Lord, she needs deliverance, Lord. Lord, send mercy, Lord, for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come out, devil. I know you're right there in that lump. I bind your power. I loose your hold. I bind your power. No, you're coming out. Let's go. Come out right now. There it is. Come out right now. Come out right now in Jesus' name. The guilt and the shame. You condemned her. You told her that molestation was her fault. You tried to blame her when she was little, you foul devil. Come out now. Spirits of Bob, you move now. Keep letting those costs go. Don't stop those. Take a few big coughs, real big. By faith. All you're doing is exercising your faith. Go, devil. Also, my husband's into Satanism. Where's he at? He's into Satanism. Oh, Lord Jesus. We need a miracle, Lord God. Lord, disagree in this prayer. Lord, we forgive the husband. What's his name? Frank. Frank. Oh, Lord God. Have mercy, Lord. Frank has bought this evil, Lord. He's brought evil into the house, Lord. He's done evil in your sight, Lord. Oh, my God, my Lord, have mercy on this woman of God tonight. The devils have made inroads, Lord, just by being in the house. Frank and his demonic prayers and his curses came to hurt even the one he loves, his own very wife. Lord, we forgive Frank, Lord. We got to flee this evil, Lord. We got to run. We got to run, Lord. We run to you, Lord. We run to you. We got to be healed tonight. We got to be healed tonight. We got to be delivered from Frank's demons. Frank's demons, I bind you now. Frank's curses, I break you now. Witchcraft, sorcery, divination, the occult, the new age and evil, I bind you now. Go in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Go in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. Go. Take a few big breaths. Fight them now. You know those are hardcore demons. Go. Frank's demons, come out. Keep going. You're, don't leave here until you get these things rolling. Devil, you come out now. 
Devil, I bind you from this woman of God right now. She stands in faith. I break every generational curse. I break every curse from any man that ever spoke evil over her or touched her. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break all Eastern spirits that came down through the family line. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Frank's curses, come out. Come out. What do you need deliverance from, sister? Huh? Oh, chokers, choke you. Okay. There they are. Keep coming out. Go. Keep coming out. Okay. Oh, is it sleep apnea? Oh, okay. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy comes in. Mercy comes in and destroys sleep apnea. I declare that you will sleep. She will live a healthy life and breathe according to the design of Jesus. I break sleep apnea in the mighty name of Jesus. I break sleep apnea in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. I break you, I loose you in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. I break sleep apnea. I break the curse of the night stalker. I break the curse of loss of breath. You come out right now in Jesus' name. Take a big breath. Come out of her lungs. Come out. Come out. Pain. Evil. Come out. Pain and evil. There they are. Evil and death. Come out. Evil and death, come out. There they are. Go. Evil and death, come out. Evil and death, come out. Evil and death, you come out of there. Evil and death, come out of there. Evil and death, you come out of there. Loose her lungs and her body. Curses from her family. Loose her. Eastern spirits. Kundalini. I loose you in the name of Jesus. Go. Go. Breathe them out. Keep breathing. They're coming out. Go. 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 You lose your home, devil. You lose your home. You come out swiftly. Go, pervert spirits that transfer. Rape spirits. Go. Molestation spirits. Go. Keep coming out. Keep coming out. Keep coming out. Keep coming out of there. Go. Don't stop till they're all out of there. Can you help this lady? Sleep apnea spirits. Go. Come out. You've been hijacking this man for years, you devil. This man's blessed. This man's a God seeker. He's been here time and time and time again. And you keep stealing from him. And you keep lying to him. But I break your power in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. I loose your hold, you mental illness, hatred, and anger. You derailment, you family curse. I break you in the name of Jesus. You come out of this man right now. The anointing of God breaks the yoke. The mercy comes today, devil. The mercy is here now. And you must leave in Jesus' name. Take a big breath. They're going now. Go. You cannot resist the mercy of God. You cannot resist the power of the name Jesus Christ. Go. There they go. There they go. They're coming out. A few more breaths. They're coming out, my friend. Your day is here. Your day is here. Your day is here. There it is. Don't stop your tears. That's the Holy Ghost. He's cleansing you. Let it go. Keep letting those tears go. It's your touch from Jesus tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy comes today. Mercy. Thank you, mercy. Oh, Lord, mercy comes today. Oh, lying spirits. Every lying spirit. Okay, hold your prayers for a second, sir. You lying spirits. You've been lying to this man for years. You've been causing him heartbreak and loss and pain. There's pain in his soul. And you sent that tragedy and that heartbreak and that loss. Well, by faith, Lord Jesus, we forgive our accusers. We forgive our persecutors and those that hate us. By the mercy of God that we have received, we freely give it to those people, family members abusing us, taking advantage of us, church people using us, manipulating us. Today, Lord, we forgive them by faith in Jesus' name. Keep breathing those out, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Take sir. a few big breaths. Devil, I bind you now. Heartbreak and loss and heaviness, sorrow and agony, anger and rage that stirs up in him. I break you in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. Come out now, generational curses from his father of anger, flying off of the temple with the temper. Come out now in Jesus' holy name. Loss and sorrow and belittlement, I break you in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out now. Go. 
Go. Go. There they are. Go. Don't stop that. That's them coming out. Go. Emphysema, come out right now. Sickness and disease, come out right now. Cancers, come out right now. Go. Go. Come out now. Blow out of those lungs, devil. Come out of those lungs. Come out of those throat. Come out of the throat. Go. Go. Satan, I bind your power. I lose your hold. Come out. Come out of there. Go. Keep taking those breaths, sir. They're coming out. Go. Go. Emphysema. Come out. Demons in the lungs. Come out. Heart attack. Cardiovascular disease. Come out in Jesus' name. Pain and anger. Go. 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 Death, you come out of there. Death, you come out of there. Death, you come out of there. Keep breathing, sir. You're getting delivered. Go. Go. Come out of those lungs and throat. Shortness of breath, chronic fatigue, sickness, tiredness. Come out, time waster. Come out. Go. 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 Come out, emphysema. Demons that came in through smoking. Go. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Go in Jesus' name. Go. Keep coming out of this man of God. Keep coming out. Keep coming out, devil. Keep coming out. Keep coming out. Sorrow and loss. Come out. Sorrow and loss. Come out. Sorrow and loss. Loss of memory. Loss of time. Loss of jobs. Go. Sir, let me talk to you for a second. What's wrong with you? What do you need deliverance from? Um, I've been coming for about three weeks. And I just yeah? To make sure I had it all out of me. Oh, okay. It takes a little of, while. I had a lot of anger come up. Oh. And then I started to... Uh, Oh, okay. Yeah, we've all done that. Just pray this. Lord Jesus, I receive your mercy. I receive your mercy, Lord. It's only mercy that covers my sins of being a womanizer, looking upon women for my pleasure and my selfish gain when you told me to look only upon my wife. Forgive me, Lord. Send me mercy, Jesus. Send me mercy, Jesus. Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord. I gotta be completely delivered of every sickness and every disease, every evil, Lord. I want complete freedom, Lord Jesus. And I turn to you, you're the only one that can heal my body. You're the only one that can deliver my soul from evil. Thank you, Jesus. Have mercy, Lord. Now come out, devil. Mercy's here, you foul devil. Sickness and disease, come out. Pervert spirits, womanizer, come out. Dirty old man spirits, he's not a dirty old man, he's a blood bought child of God. Go! Go fast. I bind your power. Come out of there. Stop resisting. Go. 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 There they are. Keep going, sir. Fight them now. They're still in there by the multitudes. Go. Go. Keep breathing, sir. They're coming out. Come out, you foul devil. Keep going. Keep going, sir. You're getting delivered. Tonight's your night, my friend. Go. What do you need prayer for, sir? For the Holy Spirit? Oh, excellent. Well, Lord. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, we want the tongues, Lord. But Lord, I pray for some deliverance first, Lord. Lord, I pray that every sin that he ever committed or his family members have committed that have affected his life would be remitted by the blood of the Lamb. We repent in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, our lives belong to you. They're not our own, Lord. I bind every spirit of guilt and shame. I bind the womanizer and the angry person. I bind the greedy person, selfish gain, hungry for money, lust for things. I bind you in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ. You will not block the Holy Spirit gift and the gift of tongues. You will come out in the name of Jesus. Make way, the, way for the Lord Jesus. Make way for the Holy Ghost, devil. Come out. I bind your power. Come out of there in Jesus' holy name. Take a few big breaths. Come out. Anger and machismo and pride. Come out. He's not going to fall. He's at this altar of God. Pride comes before a fall. Come out of there in the name of Jesus. Come out of there. Take a couple big breaths. That stuff will come right out of you. Go, devil. Let's go. Stop stalling in this man. Come out. Stop stalling in this man. Stop stalling in this man. Come out of there. You're blocking him in the name of Jesus. Move. 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 Generational curses, I break you. Aztec spirit curses, I break you in the name of Jesus. 
generational womanizing and manipulation and perversion. I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. I break all the demonic spirits that came down through the bloodline in the name and the authority of Jesus. All that pride and self-sufficiency. You come out now. Go. Go. I command you go. I command you in the name of Jesus, the Son of God. Go. Violence. Come out right now. Curse of the violent person. Go. Go. The stuff's right there. Take a couple big coughs from where my hand is. Not your lungs. Where my start, where my hand is. From there. Move. Move, devil. Move, devil. Move, devil. Move, devil. Move, devil. There's a whole bunch of them, sir. Fight these things. They're loaded all in your body. Move, devil. Move. He came for the Holy Ghost. You get out of the way, devil. Move. Move. There they are. Move in Jesus' holy name. Come out in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God. Go, you foul spirits. Go, you foul spirits. Come out of this man of God now. Go. I rebuke you and renounce you. I lose you and untie you. I command you by the power of Jesus Christ to go. 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 Don't stop that, sir. That's them. You've got to get them out of the way. Go. Go. Keep letting them go. Keep breathing. It's not by might nor by strength. It's by mercy. Mercy, devil, comes in tonight. Mercy is here. Come out of there, devil. Come out of his eyes, you lust spirits of the eye. Come out of his body. Come out of his soul. Come out, sir. You're loaded with spirits. They got to come out. They're going to rob your destiny. You'll never pray in tongues. They'll steal them right from you. Come out. You got to get these out of there. Go, devil. Go. Where's your dad at, sir? Did you ever forgive him for being a hard man? He just wasn't there. Didn't raise with you. weren't raised with him in the house. What's his name? Raul. Raul. Well, what happens is, is a mom, no matter how good she is, or grandma, they can't raise a, a, a boy to a man without your dad, and so that hurts. And there's a loss there. And then we try to overcompensate it with things and work and possessions. Let's forgive Raul, all right? You willing to do that? Yeah. yeah. Pray this prayer, Heavenly Father. You have forgiven me of all things. And I receive that, Lord, unconditional forgiveness by the blood of Jesus Christ. I receive that mercy. And, Lord, I repent of the negative emotions towards my dad. I want to forgive him the way you forgave me. I want to turn him over to heaven for blessings. He needs mercy, Lord. I pray for my dad right now in Jesus' name. I forgive everybody that hurt me, these people that took advantage of me. People that looked at me and were racist. Thought they could get over on me like I was nobody and a nothing and didn't understand. People who did me evil, I forgive them, Lord. They hurt me. They hurt my finances. They hurt my business. But I forgive them by faith, Lord, in obedience to your word. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy makes the slate clean tonight. I receive it by faith. Send mercy, Lord Jesus, for my deliverance. Now I bind that spirit of Raul, you foul devil. That hurt and pain in his soul from Raul, I bind you in the mighty name of Jesus, the Son of God. I loose you in the name and the authority of Jesus, the Son of God. And I command that spirit that mimics his father to come out of there right now. You've been moving him and making him do all these things to find approval, to find satisfaction, to find peace, to find sense of worth. And I bind you in the name of Jesus, you foul devil of rejection. I loose you in the name of Jesus, the Christ. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Move. Move. Fight him in your mind. I move. I command you. You're leaving me. I'm a Holy Ghost, blood-bought child of the living God. I have a destiny and a calling. And no demon will hinder me. No demon will infiltrate me. You must go. You must leave me now. Take another big breath. There they are. Go, devil. Go. Keep taking those breaths. Go. The guilt and the shame. You keep fighting them for a couple seconds. They're going to keep coming out. Keep fighting them. Keep fighting them. All that rejection, you leave me. All that rejection, you leave me. Keep going. Don't you leave this place. Huh? Prayer. Amen. Oh, for the Holy Ghost, Heavenly Father, thank you for the deliverance. I pray right now for the Holy Spirit to come upon her, Lord. You have said that the Holy Spirit would come, Lord, that John baptized with water, but you would baptize, Lord Jesus, with the Holy Spirit and fire. Send her the Holy Spirit, Lord. Fill her with the Holy Ghost. Give her the gift of tongues, Lord. 
Bless her with this gift in Jesus' name. Just let your tongues go. It's going to come right out of your belly. Go ahead, open up your tongue. You got to surrender to God. There you go. There you go. Pray it right through until it takes off. There you go. You got it. Keep coming out of that man. What do you need prayer for, sir? Activity, you ever been here before? No, it's my first oh, time. Okay. Yeah. Pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, I repent of all my sins, Lord. I repent of all my sins. I'm sorry of listening to lies. I'm sorry, to sorry of giving pl- for giving place to the devil. I'm sorry to give place to the devil. I turn my life over to you, Jesus. I turn my life over to you, Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord you God. paid my debt, Lord. You are my Lord and my God. Have mercy on my soul. I renounce all sin. I renounce all unforgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, that you hear my prayer. Now, devil, I bind you now. Come out, mental illness spirits, lying spirits, spirits that steal his hopes and dreams and his ability to work, confusion and lies. You come out now in Jesus' name. You come out right now in Jesus' holy name. You come out right now in Jesus' holy name. I bind every devil, generational curse, demons he picked up from porn, womanizing and lust. Come out, take a big breath, they'll come out of here. Go, devil. Go in Jesus' name. Streamers, keep going. Keep fighting until you get your... Come out, devil. Come out. You, what kind of problems do you have, sir? You got it? Cussing. Cussing? What do you do? What, you got a job? What do you do? I'm disabled. You're, what's wrong with you? Uh, I can't see straight. I can't, Why? I get up and... What's, what did they to diagnose you with? Uh, mental. Huh? Mental. Mental illness? Yeah, mental. Oh. Did your dad have that? No. Oh. Heavenly Father, I pray that this man's sins would be remitted and the sins of his forefathers would be remitted, Lord. You said of whomever sins we remit, they would be remitted, Lord. I thank you that you wore the crown of thorns for the healing of mental illness. Lord, we repent of believing lies and having fear. We renounce it in Jesus' name. Now every devil of mental illness and disability, I bind you in the name and the authority of Jesus, the Son of God. And I command you to loose him right now by the power of God's holy word. Loose him right now. Take a big breath. Let him go. Let him go. Hey, can you talk to this? You got time to talk to this guy? He said he was diagnosed with something. He's on Social Security disability. But I think we need to find some people in there that he needs to forgive that are those hooks so we can get healed. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray right now that he would be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Fill him with the Holy Spirit and fire, Lord. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead would now be in us. John baptized with water, but when mighty as in him would come, it was Jesus the Christ who would baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. I pray that the Holy Spirit would fill you now, sir, from the top of the head to the soles of your feet. And, Lord, you would give him those wonderful gifts that are contained in the Holy Ghost, including this gift of tongues in Jesus' name. Just yield your tongue. He'll just give you the language. There you go. Louder. There you go, sir. He's giving it to you. Pray harder. Those are special prayers for you and your wife and your children. Those are special prayers for your future. Fill him, Lord. Fill him, Lord Jesus. Cleanse him, Lord. Cleanse him, Lord Jesus. Any evil in here, the Holy Ghost comes, devil. He has the power of God. Any evil that binds you, any evil I break you, any evil I renounce you, any fear and guilt and shame I uproot you, any molestation I break you by the power of God's holy word. Take a big breath. Go. Let him go. Another one. Big spirit, Holy Spirit, big one in. Come out. Go. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come in. Holy Spirit, come in. Just welcome him in, sir. He's your friend. He loves you. Keep welcoming. Breathe it in. Thank you, Jesus. Touch him, Lord. Keep touching him, Lord. Fill him. Demons in the mind. Go. Go. Meth. 
Come out, meth and lion. Meth and lion. Go. Meth and lion. Come out. Lion cheating and stealing. Go. Lion cheating and stealing. Go. Lion cheating and stealing. Go. Go. Lion cheating and stealing. Go. What's happening, sir? Are they coming out of you? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, good. Which ones are you working on? Huh? I've gotten a lot of good looking. But what are the, what's the main ones that you know, like, what's your main problem? What'd you come here for? That you knew there was demons for sure and you had to get them out. Uh, I came mostly for healing. What's wrong with your body? Uh, I had a bad shoulder and neck. What happened to it? I had a skateboard accident. Oh. When I was younger. And you, what can't you do now? Is it just uh, pain? Is there anything you can't do? I've gotten a lot of work so it's a lot better. It's a lot better? Yeah. Is there what what part needs to get better now though to be all the way better? Probably my neck. Okay. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the healing power. By your stripes we are healed. Thank you, Lord, that you heal every vertebrae in his neck, every tendon and ligament in his neck. Thank you, Lord, that you heal every every ligament and tendon in his shoulders, Lord, from the AC joints to the back. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Any spirit that's hidden in this injury, I loose you in the name of Jesus the Christ. And I command this neck to be healed. I command these shoulders to be healed right now in Jesus' holy name. Okay, move your arms around like you, if you had full motion. Every pain goes. Every lock goes. Every loose, every tightness goes in Jesus' name. Where is it at? There's some pain where? You there? Every one of them in the shoulder cuffs, every one in the AC joint. I lose any spirit hiding in there, any spirit sent to block the healing. You're gone in Jesus' name. Shoulder be healed, AC joint be healed, rotator cuff be healed in Jesus' name. Okay, test it out again. What part of Nebraska are you from? Lincoln. Oh, me too. Where at? What part of Lincoln? I grew up in Air Park. Oh, in Air Park? I grew up on 84th and Vine. Yeah. 8015 East Avon. Yeah, I went to Lincoln East High School. Yeah, my mom and dad still live there. Yeah. Heading back. It'll be my uh, 30 year high school reunion in six months. Going back. It's a good place to live. What's wrong with you, sister? What are you working on? Amen. I want to go and attract millions to serve Jesus in all ways. Oh, amen. Okay. All right. Well, let's pray that prayer. Well, Lord Jesus, I thank you that you give us the desires of our heart, Lord. Thank you that you give this woman the desires of her heart, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, if there's any spirit hiding in this body, Lord, I want you to drive it out. If there's any bitterness, Lord, if there's any resentment, if there's any poor self-worth, if there's any word curse from any human ever spoken over her. I break it in the name of Jesus. I break every curse, hex, vex, hoodoo, voodoo, incantation, any spirit of false religions or cults. I break it in the family it's line. Disorder, mental illness, SMI, trust All right. Addiction. All right. Every addiction spirit, every spirit that was sent her way to cause any type of schizoaffective mental illness or confusion. I bind every lying spirit in her mind right now in the name of Jesus. Those lying spirits are saying they're not there. I bind those hiding ones. Spirit hiding. Fear. fear. Fear has to do with torment, but perfect love casts out fear. So the mercy of God delivers this woman of God. Fear and lies, I loose you in the name of Jesus. Fear and lies, I loose you in the name and the authority of Jesus, the Son of God. The spirits that drove her to self-medicate, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. Those spirits that sent those bad men to rob her, to cheat her, to deceive her, to manipulate her. I bind you in the name and the authority of Jesus, the Son of God. And I command you, devil, when I count to three, to come out, Lord. More mercy, to more mercy, Lord. Come in. One, devil. Two, three. Take a big breath. Let's go, devil. Let's go, devil. Come up out of the mind and the will and the emotions. Come up out of the mind and the will and the emotions. Come up now. Lying spirits in the mind. Come out, spirits that are causing mental illness. You're a liar. Spirits that are causing deception, you come out in the name and the authority of Jesus. Come out, I loose you from that mind. I loose you from that mind right now. I loose witchcraft, sorcery, and divination curse. I loose you right now. I loose you in the name of Jesus.
Lord, I pray you give her the gift of tongues, Lord, that she could pray her way, Lord, into blessings, Lord. Prayers and requests unknown to our natural mind, but known to God, as the Spirit makes intercession on our behalf. Ela sandra bakhor rabakema tarabakhor rabakhor